friends we have all assembled here this evening to understand what is vipassana and why it is acceptable to the followers of every religion around the world because we personalize no religion great misconception has arisen in the name of buddha and his teaching when we go through his words and his teaching which unfortunately got lost in our country for 2000 years such a long time we forgot what he actually taught we forgot his words what he meant he was not a founder of any religion he never founded any religion when one goes through the words original words of buddha which were preserved in the neighboring country for over 2000 years and i was fortunate to born to have born in that country myma burma and when we go through the words we find He never taught Buddhism. Never taught Buddhism. He did not convert a single person as Buddhist. More than fifty thousand pages of his original words, commentaries, sub-commentaries, which are now in CD-ROM. and the search program is there the word bodh is missing no buddhism no buddhist he taught dhamma that is dharma he called his followers dhammiko dharmik if it was buddha dharma then it would have been limited to a particular community a particular sect but dharma is for all not limited to a particular community a particular sect and it taught dharma hundreds of years after buddha the word bodh was never used at the time of ashoka emperor ashoka the inscriptions the word bodh is missing some of the historians were misled they thought ashoka was teaching his own dharma not buddha's dharma because the word bodh was not there and even after that we don't know after how many centuries this word buddhism and buddhist came into use to me these words degraded buddha's teaching devalued buddha's teaching 
the teaching is universal for one and all and when it has come up in its true true meaning the true practice people are willingly accepting it there is no religion today in the world no religion whose followers are not attending vipassana courses not only not followers the leaders their teachers are attending vipassana courses more than 5000 christian priests and nuns have already participated and every year hundreds of them are coming so also the jews there are regular courses going on in jerusalem muslims there are centers in muslim countries center in iran vipassana center in indonesia in malaysia and regular courses are given in oman in dubai in turkey in kazakhstan people accept it so willingly they don't find any difficulty in accepting vipassana why it is so because vipassana does not convert people from one organized religion to another organized religion because vipassana has nothing to do with the organized religions vipassana is for one and all the conversion is from misery to happiness from bondage to liberation from cruelty to compassion and people accept it because they get the result the entire teaching is so pragmatic so logical so scientific so result oriented people have no difficulty in accepting it some who do not come to the course as yet they may have some hesitation oh this is buddhism this is buddhism i don't want to get converted into buddhism the same case with me with what a great hesitation i joined my first course i was born and brought up in a very staunch conservative sanatani hindu family and my hindutva was shaken when somebody said you better take a 10 day course of vipassana to come out of your misery of migraine sva dharme nidhanam shreya पर धर्म हो भयावह भयावह आई बेटर डाई डाई विद दिस माई ग्रेन बट आई विल नेवर गो टू दिस अनादर धर्म विपशन बुद्धिज्म फॉर्चुनेटली आई वॉज आस्ट टू मीट मीट द टीचर माई फ्यूचर टीचर was also a householder a high government official the first accountant general of independent burma i met him at his house such a saintly person the entire atmosphere of his residence was full of peace full of harmony i had my own hesitation but still when i met him i told him that i have come 
to come out of my suffering from migraine and suffering from morphia injection that is given to me every fortnight when I get an attack of migraine. He said, don't come, I won't take you. This wonderful technique, you are devaluing it. This is a technique to take you out of all the miseries of the life, life and death, death and life, and you want to use it to cure your physical disease? Don't come, I won't take you. And then out of compassion, he told me, if you want to come out of the real cause of your misery, if the impurities of the mind, you want to get rid of them, then come, you are welcome. It, was, it sounded very well, but still I said, Sir, I am a very staunch Hindu, and my belief from the childhood is that Buddha is wonderful. We must pay respect to Buddha because incarnation of God Almighty Vishnu. You have no objection in paying respect to Buddha. But Buddha's teaching, no. Not for us. He smiled and said, Understand what Buddha taught and understand what I am going to teach you in the ten day course of Vipassana. You are a leader of the Hindu community in this country. Tell me, in your Hindu religion, is there any objection to morality, Sheila, Sadachar? How can there be any objection, sir? Morality is accepted by every religion of the world. My Hinduism accepts it, honors it. I will teach you how to live a moral life, Sheila. But how will you how will you live a moral life unless you have control over the mind? You are slave of your mind. You can't live a moral life. So the next step I teach you how to control the mind. We call it samadhi. Any objection in Hinduism? Samadhi? I have been reading the scriptures of my tradition and I read so and so Muni went to the jungle, so and so Rishi went to the jungle and practice deep samadhi. I am a householder. If somebody teaches me samadhi, what objection? No, sir. No objection. Samadhi is not sufficient. It, will, it is helpful to a certain extent. You will control your mind to a certain extent. You will even purify your mind to a certain extent. But at the depth of your mind, the accumulated impurities of so many lives are there. And although you will feel that I am now calm, quiet, tranquil because of Samadhi, don't know when. Volcanic eruption. Some impurity from the depth of the mind will overpower you and you are again the same person. It doesn't help fully. Suddenly, in my mind came the sage Vishwamitra, the sage Parashar, the sage Durvasha, Yes, they had deep samadhis. So what else, sir? 
to go to the depth of the mind and eradicate the impurities accumulated impurities at the root level of the mind i will teach you pragya any objection pragya i was taking great pride that i am a great follower of gita i used to give lectures on gita and in gita the most favorable subject was sthit pragya sthit pragya shaka bhasha anybody teaching pragya how can there be objection on my part i remember many a times to the hindu community in rangoon when i gave talk on sthit pragya coming back home i became very sorrowful i talked so high of sthit pragya sthit pragya se ka bhasha vita raga bhay krodh sthit dire man uchchate vita raga vit bhay vit krodh i am no trace of these qualities and i keep on talking talking about sthit pragya ta i felt very ashamed i felt ashamed but again people press me oh goin ka ji you come and give a talk today this festival that festival again out of madness and out of ego i'll go and talk and again i feel very bad and here is somebody who says he will teach me pragya he will help me to get established in pragya no sir no objection that's all in vipassana we teach only shila samadhi and pragya nothing else understand buddha taught only shila samadhi pragya nothing else in your country out of madness so many things are said about buddha and his teaching when you go through his original words you will find nothing else shila samadhi panya shila samadhi panya and that also not just sermons he made people practice it he gave a technique how to practice it and how to get established really established in pragya become sthit pragya give it trial come give it trial for 10 days after 10 days you are your own master and nobody will ask you to get converted to buddhism we don't teach buddhism at all we teach dharma i thought what harm in giving a trial and for my grain he said don't come for my grain my grain will get cured as a by product my grain you suffer from my grain because of these impurities in the mind so much of tension so much of ego and because of that my grain overpowers you when the mind becomes purified mind becomes calm tranquil at the deep level my grain will go as a by product don't come for my grain come for purification of mind he does not want me to get converted to buddhism he is going to teach me only shila samadhi and pragya what harm let me try all the little hesitation was there but very little let me try let me give it try i went for my course he told me these 10 days you have to work exactly as you are asked to work to give fair trial to give full justice to the technique 
After that, you are own master. You are your own master. But for ten days, you have to work exactly as you are asked to work. Yes, sir. I'll work exactly as I am asked to work because I have come here to give a trial. Before the course started, he gave me a small booklet. I went through the few pages. The first page, Buddha says, "Don't believe. Don't believe. Don't believe. Don't believe because your scripture says so. Don't believe because your tradition says so." Don't believe because large number of people are believing it. Don't believe because it looks logical. Don't believe. Don't believe even my words. Don't believe. What sort of teaching? I was trained that I must believe the scriptures. If I don't believe, I'll go to hell. If I believe, I go to heaven. and here he says don't believe don't believe you experience yourself your own experience if you find that it is good for you and good for all others then only believe then only accept it then not just believe then live that life so that you become a happy happy person and you help others to become happy wonderful there is no blind belief involved no blind faith involved like magnet it pulled me let me give a trial at the end of 10 days my grain was gone morphia was gone but there were so minor minor problems i realized the main thing was i was such a ego centered person such a ego centered person full of anger nothing should happen against my wishes so much of ego so much of passion not that in 10 days all that has gone away but in 10 days it started diminishing 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 in a few days a few weeks a few months the whole life pattern started changing people started talking the same going ka what has happened to him what has happened to him vipassana is result oriented no magic no miracle note that the teacher has done something teacher only shows the path you have to work out your own liberation nobody can liberate you come out of this madness that so and so will liberate me nobody can liberate you if someone is good enough and if someone is really liberated person he will only show the path and every step you have to take on the path nobody can take you on his shoulder and take you to the final goal of liberation you have to work out your own liberation you have to work out your own salvation it became so clear no gurudam no exploitation of a guru the whole technique is so clear so clear i was asked to sit to start with sit sit comfortably in any posture any comfortable posture sukh asana not necessary lotus position or half lotus position if you can sit in lotus position go ahead nothing wrong but otherwise any posture that keeps you comfortable for longer period at a stretch is a good posture for you sit keep your back and your neck straight 
Keep your eyes closed. And start observing the reality, the truth. The whole process is process of truth realization, self-realization, truth pertaining to oneself, by oneself, within oneself, at the experiential level. Not an intellectual game. Not to accept the teaching merely at the intellectual level. Not to accept the teaching at the emotional or devotional level. At the actual level. Experiential level. Just observe. Observe the reality about yourself. Know thyself. Buddha's teaching, know thyself. We spread around the world in different tradition, this was used. Know thyself. I was also used to hear that the best thing is to know myself. But I know myself. I know very well. I am Govinka. Satya, Narayan, Govinka. What else to know? I know. Madness. This was not meant by know thyself. This physical structure, the corporeal structure, to which one keeps on saying I, I, me, me, mine, mine, and tremendous amount of, amount of attachment towards it, and the mental structure, one keeps on saying I, mine, I, mine, tremendous amount of attachment towards it, and the combination of the two. Explore the truth about this. When you explore the truth of the entire field of mind and matter, then only you are able to transcend the field of mind and matter, and you will experience something beyond mind and matter. You have to experience. Don't just believe, because my scripture says so, I believe it. My teacher says so, I believe it. My tradition says so, I believe it. It won't help you. You will be just satisfied at the intellectual level or emotional level. You have to experience it. Start exploring the truth. Closed eyes, closed mouth, no physical action, no vocal action. Now let me see what reality, what reality is manifesting itself. The first reality that everyone experiences is the breath coming in, the breath going out. Reality, no imagination. Truth, the whole path is truth. From the beginning to the end, truth, 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 nothing but truth. Our sages and saints knew that, although the technique was lost, lost to the public, maybe these saints knew it. A great saint, the Prathamesh Guru says, Adi such, Jugadi such, Hai bhi such, Nanaka ho si bhi such. You start with truth, every step with truth, 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 and you reach the ultimate truth. Nothing but truth. Kim sachiya raho viye, kim kude tutte paal, hukum rajai challana, nanak likhiya na. Kim sachiya raho viye. Remain with the truth, be truthful. No imagination. The truth that you experience, not the truth experienced by somebody else. The truth that you experience from moment to moment, from moment to moment. All the imaginations and falsehoods should be removed. Only the truth that you experience. Hukum rajai chalana. 
then you start living the life life of dhamma hukum raja the god almighty or the nature whatever you call what is his hukum what is the raja what he wants he wants that you live a life free from impurities a life of purity that is what he wants the moment you generate any impurity in the mind you will be punished then and there and when you are free from impurity you will get reward then and there this is raja this is hukum hukum raja hi challana by exploring the truth within yourself you know how to live how to live a life as desired by the nature or you may call desired by the god almighty and very sad it is not written in any scriptures hukum raja hi challana o nanak likhiya na it is written within you your experience will say what is hukum what is raja wonderful but the technique was lost only words were there when i passed through the technique every word carried real meaning oh this is what our saint wanted this is what our sages wanted and we are just reciting reciting the words what we gain so start exploring the truth as it is truth of this moment the breath coming in the breath going out mere breath bare breath natural breath as it comes in naturally as it goes out naturally if it is deep it is deep if it is shallow it is shallow don't interfere with the natural flow of the breath just accept the reality as it is yatha bhut as it is not yatha krit not yatha aropit not yatha vanchit not yatha kalpit as it is the truth has manifested itself the breath coming in going out deep you accept it is deep shallow you accept it is shallow passing through left nostril left nostril right nostril right nostril don't interfere with the natural flow you are here exploring the truth thapiya na jaye o kita na hoi apu ap niranjan soi thapiya na jaye don't impose anything don't impose on the truth that is manifested itself kita na hoi don't create don't create anything don't impose anything apu ap niranjan soi the truth that manifests itself by itself just accept that and that is god truth is god not a philosophy this is a reality you have to accept whatever it is keep your attention just below the nostrils above the upper lip nasikagge after the nostril uttarottas ve madhya pradesh the upper lip the central part of upper lip a point one pointed concentration ekagra chitta that's all and keep on observing the breath nothing but breath no verbalization the moment you start using any verbalization along with the awareness that breath concentration of mind will become will become very easy i know with my experience but you are not allowed to do that because the mind will stop exploring the truth something you are creating you are reciting a word reciting a word 
you have forgotten what you have come here for and more over what word if i was asked all right you keep on deciding buddha 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 i would have said why buddha buddha i would say rama rama and somebody will say i will say allah allah somebody will say i will say jesus jesus no entry it. it can't be universal breath is universal you can't say this is hindu breath or muslim breath or christian breath breath is breath natural breath human breath just observe the truth natural truth as it is no visualization again a created truth you visualize the form the shape of this god or that goddess this guru or that guru you are again going away from the truth that you are experiencing the truth about yourself the truth about the mind the matter you are missing it leave it aside without condemning don't condemn people practice the breath by controlling it we call it pranayam wonderful it gives wonderful results but it is totally different from vipassana in vipassana never do that natural breath as it comes in naturally as it goes out naturally verbalization it has got its own value leave it aside no verbalization no visualization just the breath bare breath nothing but breath as it comes in as it goes out so easy we call it tatastha you are sitting at the bank of the river tat tatastha and the river is flowing you do nothing about the flow of the river if it is slow it is slow if it is fast it is fast you are just sitting at the bank and observing the flow of the river you are keeping your attention on this part of the body and observing the flow of the breath as it comes in as it goes out it is fast it is fast if it is shallow it is shallow if it is slow it is slow don't interfere that is tatastha you have to do nothing just observe things are happening you are not creating anything is not an exercise that you are doing things are happening naturally and you are just observing mere observation what difficult but when you come for a course the first day you will find it is so difficult so difficult hardly one or two breaths and the mind is gone again you bring oh i was here to observe my breath hardly one or two breaths and the mind is gone many times you find a new student on the first day gets very frustrated what sort of mind i am carrying what is difficult in observing the breath and we said no don't get frustrated don't generate anger even on yourself or your mind just accept the fact the mind is wandered away you realize it has wandered away accept it smilingly look it has wandered away so what i start again the breath is still there and you start again again it wanders away and you start again patiently and persistently patiently and persistently second day third day the mind gets calm down much better than it was on the first day and you were working with the truth mind you this enlightened person the greatest super scientist of the spiritual world he taught everything the entire spirituality in a very scientific way no blind faith no blind belief no dogma no cult the truth as it is he gave us a small idea and the breath you are with the reality working on a small area again reality a reality moving the breath coming in going out 
reality of the small area if the area is small and the object of concentration is truth and there is a continuation of awareness as much as you can by the time we reach the second day by the time we reach the third day different realities start manifesting reality no imagination subtler reality start manifesting the whole path is from the gross reality to the subtler the subtler the subtler the subtlest reality pertaining to the matter the subtlest reality pertaining to the mind the subtlest reality pertaining to the mental contents and then only you can transcend mind and matter and observe something which is beyond mind and matter but first you have to explore the entire field entire field of mind and matter which keeps you captivated in madness without knowing what is happening there is a constant interaction of mind and matter the mind keeps on influencing the matter and in return the matter keeps on influencing the mind and deep level impurities arise they multiply multiply and overpower you and you perform certain actions at the physical level or vocal level and later on you repent i should not have done so i should not have said so next time again again the same madness why because you are a slave of your own behavior pattern unwholesome behavior pattern and you don't know what's happening you never try to experience the truth to explore the truth about your own behavior pattern what is happening deep inside only at the surface level you try to pacify the mind won't work you have to go to the root level so the whole path takes you from the gross reality to subtler to subtler to subtler the third day some students on the second day they start feeling some sensation in this area there are sensations throughout the body every moment day and night asleep or awakened there are sensations but you don't feel you feel only very gross sensations like pain pressure heaviness respiration etc but there are so many so subtle sensations which you know you never know about them now you are exploring the truths of subtle realities some sensation starts in this area fourth day you start feeling sensation from the top of the head to the tips of the toes the entire body some sensation or the other it is there all the time but your mind was not capable to feel that now keeping the mind on a small area with the truth if it was with something imagination this would not have happened i have tried so many have tried if you are with the truth nothing but truth then mind becomes sharper and sharper subtler and subtler more and more sensitive the breath becomes subtler and subtler so thin that as it comes out like a thin thread it starts making a u turn it comes out makes a u turn so thin law of nature is such your mind has become subtle the object has become subtle so you start feeling subtler realities in this area some sensation or the other then throughout the body some sensation or the other maybe heat maybe cold maybe pressure maybe tension maybe strain maybe throbbing pulsing vibrating tingling anything you can't choose is a choiceless observation you can't choose you can't choose sensations you can't choose the reality as it manifests you just observe you just observe what you gain by this observation i was wondering what my teacher is what 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 does he want me to i observe so what if there is heat there is heat so what 
If there is throbbing, it is throbbing. Pulsing, it is pulsing. So what? Oh no! I am training my mind. One thing to be aware of the truth, the subtlest truth, from the grossest to the subtlest truth that manifests itself from moment to moment. Truth pertaining to this mind matter phenomena. Nothing else. And another thing to remain equanimous. Whatever experience, remain equanimous. Just observe. Just observe. Do nothing. No reaction. And that starts giving wonderful results. That is pragya. Vitarag, vitadvesha. The old habit pattern was that whenever I get a pleasant sensation, immediately I start reacting with craving, 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 raga, loba, loba. Unpleasant sensation, dvesha, 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 aversion, aversion. That was the habit pattern for the whole life, not only whole life, from so many lives. That habit pattern has to be changed. At the apparent level, it looks that we are reacting to the objects outside. A shape, a form, a color, a light comes in contact with the eye sense door. A sound comes in contact with the ear sense door. A smell comes in contact with the nose sense door. A taste comes in contact with the tongue sense door. Something tangible comes in contact with the body sense door. A thought or an emotion comes in contact with the mind sense door. And we react. If we say it is good, we start reacting with craving. If we say it is bad, we start reacting with aversion. This is only apparent truth. The great scientist says you are not reacting. You are not reacting to these body sensations, these uh, sensual objects. It appears to be so, it looks to be so, you are not reacting to them. Actually what happens? When any object comes in contact with the sense door, there is bound to be a sensation in the body, law of nature, bound to be a sensation. A sound has come in contact with my ear sense door. There is a sensation, a neutral vibration and evaluation is given. Oh, these are words, words of abuse. Somebody is abusing me, insulting me. And I notice, if I am a good Vipassana meditator, that takes time. This neutral vibration throughout the body changes into unpleasant sensation. The whole body, very unpleasant sensation. And then only you react with aversion. You are reacting to the sensations of the body, not the objects outside. Apparent level, yes, it is so. But at the real level, at the actual level, the body sensation. This is what he discovered. A great discovery of this great scientist. Before him and even after him. All the spiritual people, they were teaching us, don't react to this Indriya Vishaya, Vishaya of the Indri, the objects of Indri. Don't react. Don't start liking them or disliking them. Don't have craving or aversion. Don't have Raga or Dvesha, Lobha or Dvesha. He says, no, you are not reacting to this Indriya Vishaya. You are reacting to your body sensation. Learn how to feel sensations and learn how not to react to sensation. You are coming out of this madness. He has gone to the depth of the problem, found out a solution at the depth of the problem. And yes, the technique starts giving result, not that in ten days one becomes sthita pragya, but in ten days one learns how to become sthita pragya, how to get established in pragya. Vita Raga, Vita Dvesha, Vita Bhaya, all those things start manifesting themselves little by little, little by little, till you become really established. And for that, the technique, the first ten days is like going to a kindergarten class. 
But as you proceed, you keep on practicing. Twenty-day courses are given. Thirty-day courses are given. Forty-five days courses are given. Sixty days courses are given. People complain ten days. How can I spare ten days? I am such a busy person. I can't spare ten days. Now, after about a month, a sixty-day course is coming up, and there is a long line of waiting list. When people start relishing, when they start understanding, when they start getting result, possible, the next course might be of ninety days. Go to the depth where you know the real source of your problem, where you know where the bondage lies, and how to come out of that bondage. Pure science, science of mind and matter, nothing else. What Buddhism? What Buddha Dharma? It is Dharma, and Dharma means law, law of nature, universal law of nature, applicable to one and all. When you observe the breath, you can't say Hindu breath or Muslim breath or Christian breath or Indian breath or Pakistani breath or Sri Lankan breath. Breath is breath. And similarly, when you observe sensations, when you observe your own impurities, anger is a reason. You can't say this is Hindu anger or Muslim anger or Christian anger. Anger is anger. And the misery because of that you suffer. You can't say this is Hindu misery or Christian misery or Muslim misery. Misery is misery. The sensation that you feel, very unpleasant, burning sensation, you can't give a label or a name, is universal. You are dealing with the universal reality, universal law of nature. Merely understanding at the intellectual level will not help. As I say, I was going, I was giving lectures on Stet Pragyata. All an intellectual game. I didn't get anything out of it, and I am sure people who listen to me they got nothing out of that. And the same thing for Vipassana also. If you just make it an intellectual game, make it an emotional or devotional game, our teacher says so, so it must be so. So what? What you gain? You have to experience it. I give example sometimes. A child, an ignorant child, some burning charcoal, red hot burning charcoal. The child is very happy. These are red toys. I would like to play with these toys. Runs towards them. The mother stops. No, burning fire. It will it will burn you. The child cries. Again, mother stops. The child cries. It so happened that the mother is out and the child is alone and the burning fire is there and jumps and catches hold of those burning charcoal and cries, burned. He may do this mistake once or twice. Then he starts realizing, oh, this is harmful. An ignorant child, and we call ourselves intelligent persons. Why is not ignorant? Keep on generating. We generate anger and burning. We have never experienced that. Look, there is burning going on. The moment you generate anger or hatred or ill will or animosity, any negativity, you are the first victim of your negativity. A burning sensation, strong pulsation, throbbing, tension. You are a miserable person. But you never experience it. You never realize at the experiential level. You keep on repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, making your behavior pattern of anger stronger and stronger. If you realize it, oh look, I am harming myself. I generated anger, and look, I am burning. I am burning. Who will harm oneself? Nobody in the world wants to make oneself a miserable person, and yet we are making ourselves miserable. How to come out of there? So simple, and yet so hard. One has to work. Develop that faculty to feel the reality, reality of the sensations on the body, 
and see how you are reacting to these. You stop reacting to these. They become weaker, weaker, weaker and passes away. One says, I am addict. I am addict to alcohol. I am addict to this or that. After learning Vipassana, I tell him, no, you are not addicted to alcohol. You are addicted to the sensation that you feel when you take alcohol. And whenever you remember alcohol, you get that feeling and you crave, you want more, you want more. You are craving, your attachment is attachment towards the sensation. Learn how to observe the sensation. Learn how to remain equanimous with the sensation and come out of this madness. Come out of this madness of addic addiction, addiction not only of the alcohol, addiction towards anger, addiction towards passion, addiction towards all the impurities. You get so much addicted. You are suffering and yet you keep on multiplying it. You are suffering, still you keep on multiplying it. What are you doing? What am I doing? One has to realize that. Mere sermons won't help. I don't say that sermons are useless. Sermons are very good. You get inspiration by listening to sermons. You get guidance listening to sermons. But mere sermons won't help. Don't make dharma an intellectual game. Don't make dharma an emotional or devotional game. Otherwise, you are harming yourself. You are strengthening your bondage. You are not coming out of it. Experience the truth. Is burning charcoal? No. I can't touch burning charcoal. Oh, this impurity burns me. It makes me miserable. No. No, I won't allow this to happen. And you start coming out of it. Start coming out of it. When I came to India, I went to Mahatma Gandhi's ashram. I met his granddaughter, his daughter, daughter-in-law, Nirmala Gandhi, and we discussed about this vipassana. It was new for her. There is a technique which helps you to come out of uh, your impurities, mental impurities. He said, "This is wonderful. This is what Bapu wanted." But how can there be a technique for that? I said, "Try. Let us see." And a course was held at the ashram of Mahatma Gandhi. And some of the companions, very elderly people, participated. Wonderful results, as it comes everywhere. Wonderful results. After the course, those participants pressed me to go to Vinova Bhave in Pavanar, quite near. I said, I have come to, I am new to this country. I would very much like to meet saintly people here. So we went and met Vinova Bhave. We discussed, he said, impossible. A purity of mind can be attained only by the mercy of God or grace of God. How can there be a technique for that? I can't believe. He won't believe. I said, I also didn't believe. But when I pass through it, I find it gives result. And thousands of people have done that. Give a trial. As all that, I give you a challenge. A very undisciplined students of the school, if you can change their behavior, I will accept the efficacy of this technique. Or very hard criminals in the jail, if you change their behavior, I will accept the efficacy. I'm new, sir. You arrange a course. I will teach. Let us see. A course was done for the students, very indisciplined. Within ten days, wonderful results came. Unbelievable. Then said, all right, in the jail. But no jail, no prison was agreeable to allow me to stay for ten days in the jail. Although I said, give me, give me also, make me a prisoner and let me stay there for ten days. No, not allowed. You come in the morning, six o'clock, leave in six o'clock. Not possible. I must be there. All the twenty-four hours, something might happen to my student. I must be present. It couldn't happen. After three years, the Home Secretary of Rajasthan government participated. He found it so good. It is so good for our country. 
where there are so many multi religious people of different religions and this is something acceptable to every religion this must spread in our country i requested him your home mini- home secretary why not allow me to have a course in the prison change your rules for two courses he agreed and made some arrangements two courses were given wonderful results very hard pr- criminals and then the word started spreading in different prisons kiran bedi in tihar jail thousand students during the course after getting the sensation i asked one of the prisoner what sort of thoughts you are getting very honestly a prisoner says while i am practice my mind starts wandering and the only th- the thought that comes in my mind is i have to take revenge i have to take revenge when i come out of the prison i will kill that judge or that magistrate i will kill that police fellow i will kill that fellow who gave witness against me revenge revenge i understand but just see when you are having this feeling of revenge what sensation i never tried sir try now see what sensation and he comes to me says burning sensation are anger revenge means anger hatred ill will animosity nothing but burning sensation tense you are miserable you don't know when you will kill whether you will kill or not kill but you are killing yourself now you are harming yourself what you are doing and slowly starts changing 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 it is only by experience that people can change not merely by sermon all of you some of you have taken courses but others i will say don't remain satisfied with this sermon on vipassana spare ten days of your life in this tradition a teacher never asks for any donation from the time of buddha it is given free no donation donation is never asked willingly somebody gives acceptable but never ask especially a teacher will never ask and here i am i break that rule i ask donation and i i ask donation from all of you what donation 10 valuable days of your invaluable life give me 10 days for you are good for you are benefit and who knows through you for the good and benefit of so many may all of you enjoy real peace real harmony by the practice the ancient practice of this country which was lost 2000 years is a long time totally lost and it is now come back to the country make use of it be happy be peaceful be liberated bhavatu sarva mangalam bhavatu sarva mangalam bhavatu sarva mangalam sukhi ho sukhi ho सुखी हो वॉट बेनिफिट वी गेट फ्रॉम बी प्रश्न पी हारमनी हैप्पीनेस ए वंडरफुल लाइफ होल सम लाइफ you live peacefully yourself and you generate nothing but peace and harmony for others this is a way of life a very healthy way of life what why should we do vipassana to live a good life happy life peaceful life liberated from all the miseries what is the ultimate goal of vipassana to purify the mind and generate 
positive qualities, love, compassion, goodwill, etc. Can a special course be conducted inside IIT Bombay for a group of students? Well, you arrange, you can send a teacher. It is for you to arrange the course. What is wrong with social drinking? Just a small starter before meals. Well, it all starts like that and later on, you know, when you become a slave of that. So why take such a step which makes you a slave? Is Vipassana Buddhism? That is the wrong impression created by people during the last 2000 years. Vipassana has nothing to do with Buddhism. Buddha's teaching has got nothing to do with Buddhism. Success money, what is wrong with this equation? Nothing wrong, provided you know how to earn money in a proper way, honest way, and then how to use money in a proper way, good for you and good for others. Why our Indian politicians cannot be sent for such courses? Send them, we are here to help. I am young and very ambitious. Why should I go for Vipassana? Is this young, in this young age, well, this is the age when you should learn. The whole life is there for you. You have to live a very good, healthy, wholesome life. Why not learn now? People say that they will learn Vipassana at the old age. Good, any time you can learn, but better uh, learn when you are young. Why is no course fees charged for Vipassana? Because people cannot give the fees for Vipassana. It is invaluable. What value, what tag, value tag can be fixed on that? And not only that, how the people from Jopur Patti, such poor people, how they will take advantage of Dhamma? Dhamma is for all, rich and poor, therefore no fees is charges. Till I am able to attend my first 10 day course, what can I do as the next best thing? Wait for, for the time to ripen. What is mindfulness and how it is related to Vipassana? Vipassana is mindfulness. You are aware of whatever is happening within the framework of the body. Please suggest methods to overcome anxiety, to escape from death. Escape from fear of death. Anxiety, Vipassana will take away. All anxiety, all fear, Vita Bhaya. The moment you get any anxiety, you get any fear, just accept the fact there is fear now and let me see what sensation. Because nothing can arise in the mind without a sensation in the body. That was a great discovery of the enlightened person, the great scientist. You start observing the sensation, first learn Vipassana. And then later on, you start observing the sensation, oh look, fear has come. Sensation is there, impermanent, impermanent, impermanent. It passes away and you are out of fear. Many people have come out of fear. Don't you feel that concentrating can unruly mind? You are causing more harm than good. Practice for ten days and you will know that you are doing more good than harm. How is Vipassana different from yoga? Well, by yoga, if you mean asana and pranayam, it is wonderful, a very good technique to keep you healthy at the physical level. But Vipassana is a mental exercise to keep your mind healthy. And of course, when the body is healthy, it has good effect on the mind. When the mind is healthy, it has good effect on the body. Practice yoga, nothing wrong. But at the same time, practice Vipassana to make your mind healthy. What is thought, how it generates in mind? Just observe and it will become so clear. Learn Vipassana and all about the thoughts, the mental faculties will become clearer and clearer. From a person who did course, uh, explained me that, the, that Vipassana, I found that the Spelling in the posters can be changed to 
vipassana yes in sanskrit we say vipassana but the teaching of buddha is in pali language the local language of those days and in that we say vipassana can this course be arranged at iit for 10 days course should be arranged by the people and we send a teacher to teach buddhism does not believe in existence of god how can we say buddha as a incarnation of bhagwan vishnu it is totally wrong to say that buddha was incarnation of bhagwan vishnu and buddha believed in god but that god was truth satya hi ishwar hai param satya hi parameshwar hai why can't we have a 10 day course here in iit how vipassana is helpful for students in their studies how can i convince my friends to take a course first you take a course and see what benefit you get then you can easily convince your friends the benefit is that your memory will become sharp your mind will be more tranquil understanding the subject that is taught in the school or in the college will be very clear to you and you will remember it how to concentrate during vipassana for a newcomer take a 10 day course that is the best way otherwise you may go astray every day we will do so many sins how can we know what is a sin by practice vipassana it will be very clear if it is a sin you will feel so bad vibration will be so unpleasant and you will feel you are miserable and you are if you are not creating a sin then you won't feel this kind of unpleasantness how to overcome the fear of future by vipassana all the fear will go away who is the originator of vipassana is buddha or anyone buddha is not monopoly of gautama siddhartha gautama was one of the buddha before him countless buddhas were there in this country and every buddha taught nothing but vipassana how do i choose my career practice vipassana and then you will be in a better position to make right decisions buddha invented buddhism to oppose side effects of hinduism no this is all wrong information created during the last 2000 years buddha taught dharma had nothing to do with buddhism or hinduism does vipassana go against being ambitious ambitious but in a proper way for good results right results right aims how can vipassana stop the terrorism in the world people who have taken courses in the jails hard criminals what a big change has come in them a time will come when it will spread in every country where there is terrorism and terrorism will get eradicated from the mankind peace harmony etc is all well and good but can you give specific examples of benefit of vipassana you practice yourself hundreds and thousands of people have practiced and those are the examples what a big change has come a big change has come in the prisoners a big change has come in the ceos executive officers both of the business and executive officers of the government officers of the government are coming to the courses and they get benefit from it and the same benefit with anybody who takes the course how life relates to experience well practice your passion and you will know how it relates to experience vipassana is nothing but experience agar samrat ashok ka alag dharm hai to tathagat bhagwan buddha samrat ke dham mein kya farak hai koi alag dharm nahi tha ye pagalpan se na samjhi se kyunki ashok ne bodh shabd ka prayog nahi kiya apne sare shila lekhon mein keval dharm 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 kaha धार्मिक 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 का तो लोग इस भ्रम में पड़ गए जो अच्छे अच्छे इतिहासकार हैं वो इस भ्रम में पड़ गए कि अशोक ने बौद्ध धर्म नहीं सीखा और न सिखाया उसने अपना ही कोई धर्म सिखाया 
अरे बुद्ध ने भी धर्म सिखाया बौद्ध धर्म नहीं सिखाया तो अशोक तक तो बौद्ध शब्द का प्रयोग ही नहीं था इसका ईजाद इसका आविष्कार इसका प्रयोग बहुत वर्षों बाद शुरू हुआ किसने शुरू किया ये अनुसंधान का विषय है शोध का विषय है लेकिन बुद्ध के 200-400 वर्ष तक तो बुद्ध शब्द का कहीं प्रयोग नहीं नजर आता मुर्गी के पास मोमबत्ती लगाना गुरु जी के पास मोमबत्ती लगाओगे क्यों लगाओगे <laughs> गुरु जी के पास मोमबत्ती लगाना व साधना करना गलत है बिल्कुल गलत है इन कर्म खंडों से क्या मिलेगा अपने भीतर की मोमबत्ती जलाओ भीतर जानो क्या सच्चाई है वो तुम्हारा कल्याण करेगी न कोई गुरु जी कल्याण करेगा और न उसके सामने लगाई हुई मोमबत्ती कल्याण करेगी शुड वी बिलीव इन पुनर्जन्म whether you believe or not believe it makes no difference you experience and you will find that there is punarjanma there are many people large number of people don't believe in punarjanma and they come and they get the same result as those who believe in punarjanma you live believe in the present janma janma which is more important than your past janma or future janma believe in present janma and purify your present janma sometimes we see bad people around us living happily while good people are suffering is it possible to overcome this contradiction and achieve peace of mind yes when you feel that there is somebody happy you must have sympathetic happiness in you don't start having jealousy towards this person he may have done some good karma of the past and that's why he enjoying it so what and if somebody is suffering because of the bad karma of the past have sympathy karuna for this person have mudita for those who are happy and have karuna for those who are unhappy sir you know the sogakai buddhism please tell me what is the difference well i give no importance to buddhism this buddhism or that buddhism i give importance to dharma Buddha taught dharma not buddhism can all attain peaceful by attaining course once or twice no a beginning is made in the first or second course and you start moving on the path a path of peace and harmony kabhi kabhi man bhatakta hai va kaam karna band kar deta hai mere mistra ko ye karyalay mein सक्रियता रवाना होना बंद हो जाता है मेरे कोई गलती हो तो माफी मांगती हूँ पतिदेव काम नहीं कर पाते काम करते करते थक जाते हैं तो बेटी पहले तुम शिविर करो और तुम में आया हुआ बदलाव देख करके तुम्हारे पति देव भी करेंगे और फिर देखो सारी दुनिया बदल जाएगी तुम्हारे लिए ये जो भी कठिनाइयाँ हैं वो शिविर करने से अपने आप दूर होती है आदमी अंदर से बदलता है तो बाहर की दुनिया बदलनी शुरू हो जाती है हु रियली फाउंडेड विपशना एवरी वन बिकम्स बुद्ध डिस्कवर्स विपशना Does Vipassana help a pregnant woman deliver her baby? Yes, many are coming. Many pregnant women are coming, saying that we want Dhamma baby, we want Dhamma baby, and they get Dhamma baby. It is good. It doesn't harm anybody. I am a student. I have a very busy schedule. How much time do I have to give per day if I go for Vipassana course? everyone feels that this one is very busy you take it and day course and then morning and evening one hour one hour and you will find that you are not wasted your time you have made best use of your time and you are getting benefit by it in your daily life can you give your lecture in marathi i have to learn marathi how to reach you to arrange a marathi course well i have got students i have got teachers who speak wonderful marathi language call them 
and they will give you a speech in Marathi, discuss with them in Marathi language. The entire course is given in Marathi language. You come for ten days, and if you speak only Marathi, you can understand very well in Marathi language. In about thirty, thirty-five languages of the, the world, Vipassana is taught in, in these languages, and people get benefit from that. Why everyone impose their opinion on others because of the ego, and by this technique, the ego goes away, and you stop imposing yourself on others. How will we get to know the ultimate truth of anything? Only by practicing at the experiential level. How you realize your actual existence through the Pashana? It started with 10-day course and then I carried on. Last 50 years I have been working on it and I got wonderful results. And I want all of you to get the same wonderful results. Baki <laughs> are Hello. What exactly happens during the practice of Vipassana? Experience it by giving ten days of your life. What about injustice in the external world? You will be able to face all that by practicing Vipassana and making your mind stronger. When and where the Vipassana course is to be held, discuss with the management or people who are arranging this talk and you will know from them. Courses are given around the world. There are 130 centers, residential centers around the world, and non-resident, non-centers are there, also residential in many countries around the world. And there are more than 900 teachers trained for this purpose. In what way I, it will help me to improve my research results? Certainly, you take 10-day course and then you will find that it has started helping you in different ways. How do you see the existence of God as a universal creator? You are your own creator, there is nobody else to create. Be your good creator yourself. Is it really possible to control mind completely where people come in contact with so much of pressure? Well, this is what Vipassana teaches you. The entire situation around is not very healthy, but yet you are healthy, so you can face this unhealthy situation easily. What is the difference between Sudarshan Kriya and Vipassana? Well, people who have taken a few courses in Vipassana, they have started teaching in a wrong way with different names, meaning the same Darshan is Pashana, Vipassana, Sudarshan, you may give any name. But whether it is the technique is taught in its pure way, that is more important. Name doesn't matter. With visualization, I am feeling good. Concentration on the mind. Certainly, visualization, verbalization helps you to get good concentration, but the concentration will be only on the surface of the mind, and Vipassana wants you to go to the depth of the mind, the root of the mind. Be happy, be peaceful, khub mangal ho, khub kalyan ho. Sab ka mangal, sab ka mangal, sab ka mangal ho ire. Tera mangal, tera mangal. Tera mangal ho ye re tera mangal ho ye re mangal ho Manav Deira Mangal Hove Manav Deira Mangal Hove Duraya Mangal Hove Shuddha Dharam Sabke Man Jage 
शुद्ध धर्म सबके मन जागे मुक्ति दुखों से हो रे सब का मंगल सब का मंगल सब का मंगल हो रे तेरा मंगल तेरा मंगल तेरा